For Alligator is finally back with the Indigo Disc DLC, and it's still one of the greatest starter Pokemon. It has solid offensive capabilities with its base 105 attack, but its base 78 speed requires a little help. The Gator gets to pretend to be a dragon with Dragon Dance, effectively boosting both speed and attack, and can even take hits in the process with its base 100 defense. It was also buffed in Gen 9 by being given the new move Flip Turn, which allows a nice stab pivot option, but where Feraligator truly shines is with its ability Sheer Force. This boosts any moves that have secondary effects by 30% at the cost of nullifying those effects. For example, Liquidation gets the insane boost in damage, but can no longer drop the target's defense. This also negates the recoil it would take from the Life Orb held item, which also boosts damage by 30%. It enjoys the Sheer Force boost and the Free Life Orb with a bunch of different coverage moves like Crunch and Ice Punch, and Feraligator can become a massive threat. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I have a really good game for you here. I'm always excited to play with Pokemon that were brought back and we haven't been able to use for a while. Shout out to Game Freak for the DLC. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k. It's free, it only takes you a second, and let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Gliscor. This thing is named Devil because that's what it is. It's literally the devil. And I decided to lead off with the Golurk, who is about to ruin this man's entire career. So one of my favorite things to do is go for the trick turn one against the Gliscor before it can activate its Toxic Orb. Gliscor says, damn, what a wonderful day to be poisoned. Here's a poison for you. I'm going to take mine in a second. I say, actually, no, you are not. Because I go for the trick, giving this thing a choice band and effectively just stealing that there Toxic Orb from him. And I'll tell you what, this thing is way less annoying when it can't just constantly heal with its poison heal. So... I do get poisoned myself, which is fine. This is an opportunity now to go ahead and set up a Stealth Rock, and they're gonna end up staying in here. Try out the old brand new Choice Band. It actually, it's a gift. It doesn't actually fit exactly right, but no returns around here, ho. And I'm able to live a knockoff, which allows me to set up the Stealth Rock for free, and Golurk is over here feeling pretty good. Now, knowing that this thing is stuck into knockoff, because of that Choice Band is actually really good. We can predict this thing super easily and take advantage of the fact uh, that the devil over here is having some, some choice issues. So I decided to just stay in here. I'm going to go for the Poltergeist in case of a switch. However, they do just stay in and finish me with the knockoff there. They're like, dummy, you shouldn't have gave me this extra damage, bro. Check these big meaty claws out. As now, I get a free switch into whatever I like. And I decide it's time to go into the Feraligator. We have a solid matchup here, and we have the potential to get the butt cheeks going crazy. I mean, it might never compare to that Gen 3 back sprite, if you know what I'm talking about. However, this does allow me an opportunity to freely set up a Dragon Dance. So, I go for that dance there, and the Gator is looking pretty promising here. As they actually stay in, they decide to just go for the knockoff, and they say, you know what, that uh, that Life Orb, Sure Force thing, we ain't playing that today. So, they do some nice chip damage, and also get rid of that Life Orb. However, I'm sitting here at plus one attack and speed, looking faster than their entire team, barring Choice Scarfs. And I have all sorts of coverage out here. Most importantly, I've got the Ice Punch for the Devil, and we were just going to straight freeze over hell today. That is going to take care of the Gliscor, and for Alligator is sitting pretty nice at this point. We don't have our Life Orb, but we do still get the extra damage from all of our moves, considering they all have secondary effects. So, now they decide to switch into Blaziken. This can only mean one thing. It's going to protect turn one, grab itself a speed boost and out speed. So I'm going to predict them to go for the protect, which they do. And I decide to dance again, because at plus two speed, if I can stay up above this thing, Alligator doesn't care as long as we get these little gator legs going crazy. So, I'm now sitting at plus two attack and speed after the successful dragon dance here. It does get its speed boost, but it's not going to help you now, buddy. I can now go for a liquidation, and they are going to have to switch out the Blaziken. If you've ever been curious as to what it feels like to be hit by a truck full of bricks going 100 miles an hour, it's pretty much being on the receiving end of a liquidation from this for alligator here. They decide to switch in uh, the Glamora here, and a liquidation is going to absolutely demolish Buddy. And it does set up a nice little layer of toxic spikes, but you're going to have to get through the Gator first. It is also wearing that Rocky helmet, so we take a little bit of chip damage, but we will gladly accept the nice little free kill on a pretty big threat over there. So, now they get the door open to switch into essentially whatever they like. And they decide to go into the Golden Go here, so... Our little Cinnamon is the Winamon ass fool is essentially he's not fast enough to do much here. He has the coverage, but I have the coverage as well. I can go for that crunch, take a nice little bite out of him like a breakfast cereal, and that takes care of the Golden Go as well. So, listen, the coverage on Fraligator is so much fun, plus getting all the benefit uh, from the, the, the sheer force is literally insane. So, now they decide, you know, okay, if I can't beat him, I'm going to join him. They go into their own Fraligator at this point. 
and I'm actually just gonna go right for the Terra Water. Get as much possible damage as I can with the Liquidation, and it does not matter even if it's resisted, it's still gonna do literally so much damage, and I have a lot in the back to try to clean up the rest of the game. So, I go for the Terra Water here as if, you know, for Alligator needed any extra damage here, but now Liquidation is straight up off the damn charts over here. We're looking goofy in our hat, but it is literally fine. They actually end up going for a Terra of their own, and as you can see here, this thing ends up going with a nice little Terra Steel. So, they put on the crazy ass axe on his head, but that actually works out for me greatly because now they no longer resist my water attack, and guess what? A Liquidation is gonna absolutely obliterate Homeboy, and you just got out Gatored by the Gator. This liquidation hits like sucking the Gatorade straight out of the teat of the Gator and they actually <laughs> decide to just turn their switch off because they had a bad time. So we've effectively made some plays and showed them the true power of Alligator even without the life orb. However, we ain't satisfied. I have match number two ready to go. So my opponent here is working with a team that's full of a potential setup threats but also just some pretty bulky and scary mods. So let's go ahead and get into game number two. This time my opponent is going to straight up lead off with the Snorlax, and I decide to toss out the Golurk of course, I want to set up my Stealth Rock, I can do big damage if I'm Choice Banded, but now I figure we might actually just be trading, just re-gifting this Choice Band, for real. Snorlax lead can only mean one thing, and that is that this thing's going to try to set up something on me. And I decide, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and give you this Choice Band, going to make you hit real hard, but it's going to make you stuck into whatever you do. And since I'm faster, I'm able to steal their Figgy Berry, and they actually end up going right for the Belly Drum. But he thinks he can pull something off here, get some big damage. However, now the Snorlax is stuck into a move that does half to himself. So that could not have worked out better. And Golurk is just out here trading away this choice band for great ass opportunities. So obviously they have to switch. Snorlax has no business staying in there, <laughs> stuck into Belly Drum. And in comes generation one fat ass number two, the Clefable, as I take this opportunity just to set up my rocks. And I don't know really what this thing's working with. I'm figuring it's probably some type of calm mind set with Moonblast, Flamethrower coverage. Something like that, and Golurk doesn't have a lot that I can do here, but I do in fact have a big ass metal monstrosity on my team in the form of Metagross, so I'm just gonna go directly into this as I imagine they probably try to go for something like the Calm Mind, either that or it's gonna be like a, a Stealth Rock kind of more lead option. So Xbox comes in, no Red Ring of Death out here, as they decide to go for the Ice Beam against the Golurk, and that actually works out perfectly. Didn't expect, but Clefable gets the opportunity to run pretty much any damn attack ever, so that is what it is. But at this point, I can then go for a nice little Meteor Mash here, and they decide to switch right on back into the Snorlax. I, I likely should have taken this opportunity to go for something uh, like the Trailblaze to get Metagross going. However, we're able to just basically take care of the Snorlax for free, and that thing being Choice Banded probably wasn't going to be able to get an attack off, being already at like half health. So, not a bad sack there, as this then draws out a free switch into the Chandelure, who obviously does scare me with a Flamethrower. I'm thinking about potentially going for my Terra, However, I'm just going to actually just end up switching right into the Hydrapple. I figure I can come in, take an attack from this thing, being Assault Vested, and then Hydrapple does pretty decent damage to whatever they want to switch in, which likely then draws out Clefable, but I can predict that and just not go for Flip Beam. But they actually end up going for the Will-O-Wisp, so I'm glad that I was able to switch out the Metagross. Apple does not really care about being burnt. We a little bit, a little extra crispy Apple out here today, but... That is honestly kind of the best case scenario, because now at this point, I know that I'm still able to take any attack from this, and I can actually fire off a nice little super effective Earth Power. So I end up going for the Hex, and with the burn, it's going to do some solid damage, but I am Assault Vested, and for whatever reason, the thickest damn Caramel Apple you've ever seen, so I take that super nicely, and an Earth Power is going to just knock out the Chandelure. So we take a little bit of burn chip, does put us below half, and we're a little bit in danger over here as now they can switch into whatever they like. And in comes this damn thing. Como O is an absolute threat right now. And if this thing can set up, it can definitely get out of hand super quickly. So I figure I'm gonna go for the Dragon Tail in case, you know, whatever this thing wants to do, but it just clanging scales, and that does just end up knocking out the uh, the Hydra Apple. So Snake Apple goes down, but being able to take care of Chandelure is totally fine. And this now allows me a free switch. So. I figure for Alligator does look really nice in my late game at this point. However, uh, the Gouging Fire actually looks really nice in, in this opportunity here. I can come in, activate that booster energy, which is going to give me my Protosynthesis, make my attack nice and scary. And at this point, I'm going to predict them to go for some type of Dragon move here. I'm going to commit my Terra Fire to lose my Dragon Typing so it's no longer super effective. I can then Dragon Dance and then be faster, and then Gouging Fire looks very nice. But they actually just end up going ahead and switching out here. And they're going to switch in Simba, literally on Mufasa. It could, it could not be a better situation out here. Um, and Simba comes in. He's going to get that Intimidate, which is annoying. Uh, however, 
I take the upper hand here because I'm going to go for that Terra Fire. I'm also going to get up a free Dragon Dance, so that's going to bring my attack back to plus one. And we go ahead and put a massive <laughs> chandelier on our head. And that is going to be a very scary looking Gouging Fire over here. Uh, so listen, Luxray has a couple options against the Gouging Fire. I figure this is probably like some type of just all-out offensive set. Uh, kind of just looking at the context clues of their team. I get that Dragon Dance up. And at this point, I decide to just go for the Burning Bulwark. I'm going to just basically protect your scout with this thing wants to go for, and then I can kind of figure out a plan after that. However, it turns out I go for that Burning Bulwark, they actually go for the Thunder Wave. So that is the downfall of this move. While it does protect you against contact moves, anything else does go through it. So I now get paralyzed through my Burning Bulwark, and we're having ourselves a bad time. It's actually not the end of the world, because even paralyzed, after a Dragon Dance, I am in fact faster. It almost ends up knocking this thing out in one hit, and they decide to go for the Discharge here. So, I know that obviously I can take Discharge out here all day. I'm figuring, you know what, I'm just going to Dragon Dance once again, see if I can get another one off. Uh, but, the universe has different plans. I do in fact get fully paralyzed. And then they actually go for the Scary Face. Drops my speed even further, and damn it, this Entei... Crazy bastard with his big ass shield on his head making him extra heavy and he is real slow today. So at least luckily I'm able to take one more attack and end up knocking out the Luxray. But at this point I'm way too slow to make a difference at this point and they can just go right into everybody's worst, worst enemy, freaking Milotic. This thing, super bulky, has the potential to like coil if it wanted to. And I actually don't have a lot of good answers to this thing in the back. So I try to just go for that Dragon Claw, they do outspeed, connect on a Hydro Pump, and down goes the Gouging Fire. So, now I find myself in a situation where I've gotta try to make something happen here and depending on this Milotic, it could be a real dick about it. So I actually just decide to go right into Feraligator. I figure, while I don't have anything extra effective on this with the Feraligator naturally, they also don't have anything to hit me with. So I figure this is a kind of decent opportunity to Dragon Dance again. This is a straight up Dragon Dance party out here as I can go for that Dragon Dance. This is a battle that actually happened uh, previously before I moved Ice Fang over to Ice Punch. Listen, it's a few less power, I didn't have the TM materials for Ice Punch, and this happened really early after the DLC. So, I am in fact running Ice Fang on this for Alligator over Ice Punch. Let's just call it a style point. So, they actually are going to end up being a Coil Milotic. So, they give themselves a nice little plus one defense there, which makes this a little bit more annoying. But, I can go for a Crunch after a Dragon Dance, and a critical hit just straight up takes care of the Milotic. I'd, I figured they probably only had something like Ice Beam and Hydro Pump for coverage, so we would have been able to take attacks, but for Alligator just bypasses all the nonsense and just deals with it right away. So, this then draws in Clefable. I go for that Liquidation at plus one, Sheer Force with the Life Orb. That is actually just going to straight up take care of this thing. It turns out not to be the Unaware ability, instead it had Magic Guard and uh, thing be Magic Garden in Hell at this point because he dead and now we have the scariest shiny Metal Dragon however I am faster I have the coverage with the Ice Fang and even though it's not no Ice Punch it does still have enough damage especially after a Dragon Dance uh, to, t <laughs> to take care of that thing so for Alligator going on an absolute late game tear and that is going to be the end of the match so thank you guys very much for watching I thought these games were just super fun for Alligator is amazing and one of my favorite starters for sure and definitely leave a comment if you enjoyed the video. I really love seeing all the support, and you guys are literally amazing. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.